If you're thinking about relocating to the Seattle area and you want to know what the best Seattle suburbs are for you to live in, this is the video for you. I'm going to take you through what it's like living here in the Seattle area, particularly in the suburbs, and talk about where you can live, what your options are, and how you should decide. So thanks so much for joining me. And of course, welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. I'm Emily Cressy. I'm a local real estate agent, and I love helping folks who are relocating to the area find their perfect home. I am an economics major. I'm very data-driven, and I want to give you the information that you need, both left brain and right brain, so you can see what it's going to be like to live here, get that vision in your head, and have the data to help you make the right decision. So if you're relocating to the Seattle area, the first thing we need to know is where is your job? Typically when people are choosing a place to live, we have them take a map like this and put a couple important points on, uh, on the map. These are kind of a triangle. So one is your job. One is your family and friends. If you know other people who live in the area, maybe uh, there's someone here that you want to be close to. And number three is your recreational activities. Do you like swimming in Lake Washington? Do you like uh, going crab fishing in Puget Sound? Do you like skiing and cross-country skiing out in the mountains, hiking? Where you anticipate spending your time is going to be an important factor for where you'd like to live. So why don't you start by taking a map like this and putting some marks on it so you can kind of figure out where you want to be. For uh, most people for employment, maybe one of you has a job and your spouse doesn't have one yet, or maybe you're moving to the area for family, but you don't know where you're gonna be working, then here are the major employment centers. Seattle, biggest city, that's where all the skyscrapers are. And then across Lake Washington to the east is Bellevue. This is the most, it has skyscrapers. It's the most expensive city, I would say. And then down here to the south is Tacoma and up here to the north is Everett. Uh, there's a naval base up here in Everett, and there's uh, Lewis McCord Joint uh, Air Force Army Base down here in Tacoma. Uh, there's also across the sound here in Bremerton, but it does take a ways to get out there on the ferry. So while some people do commute maybe from Bainbridge Island right here into the city, for the most part, um, these islands are kind of a separate separate world. So you can see here kind of where the gray areas are. That's kind of where it's built up. That's the city. That's the urban suburban areas. And um, unfortunately, the map doesn't s specify or differentiate between urban and suburban. But you can see the green areas, at least, are areas that would be considered rural. They might be um, hiking and national forest type areas like we have over here in the Cascade Mountains. Uh, we have uh, Indian tribal land over here, west of Marysville, and then out here by Granite Falls and Arlington, we have both forests as well as farming and agricultural areas. If you've seen any pictures of our um, great tulip fields, those are up here uh, toward Mount Vernon. So as a general rule, if you don't know where you're going to work, you're probably going to want to be getting access to somewhere like Seattle or Bellevue for your employment options, you can either go to the north. And when my husband and I were in this situation, I did not have a, a day job and he was working as an independent contractor, which we knew would be a short-term gig. We chose to live right here between kind of at the intersection of the I-5 freeway, which goes into the Seattle and the 405 freeway, which goes south into Bellevue. And we could also go north into Everett. So you kind of have a a three-point uh, Y interchange here, which gives you very good access to three different employment centers. You could do the same thing here at the bottom of Lake Washington if you wanted to get into Seattle and Bellevue or go south to Tacoma. Generally speaking, price-wise, Bellevue is gonna be the most expensive area. This is where Bill Gates lives. Uh, this is where in Redmond, um, the Microsoft campus is. We have Mercer Island, which is great access to both places, but is, uh, you know, very considered very luxury real estate. 
And Bellevue in the last decade or so has done a better job of keeping their city streets clean, less graffiti, less vandalism, less crime, less homelessness, less drug use. And so for that reason, and better schools. And so for all of these reasons, I would say they have seen a continual rise in their stock of people wanting to uh, be on that side of the lake, the east side, we call it. Whereas in Seattle, we're seeing a falling off uh, because of many of those factors that I just mentioned. So if you're looking at suburban versus urban, uh, the city of Seattle pretty much ends right here. There's a, a street called 145th Street Northeast. And that's kind of the boundary above that is the city of Shoreline. And you can definitely tell like when you're going south on this busy street here, Highway 99, um, you know, once you get south into Seattle, you'll see a lot more prostitution and that type of thing because of differential law enforcement in the different cities. So a lot of people choose to get out of uh, the city of Seattle for that reason. Now, all along here, you'll find houses of different sizes and different prices. But typically in the past, what we've seen is that the closer to Seattle, the more expensive it is, the farther away, the longer your commute, the, the better price, the cheaper price. Um, now what we're seeing is that the closer to Bellevue and Kirkland, Newcastle here, this area is some of the highest priced real estate. And you're gonna find the same type of house for maybe 20 to 30% less on the Seattle side. Uh, another thing to take a look at is proximity to some of these big um, arterial streets like Highway 99, um, not as nice, the freeway, not as nice. So here in the center is going to be less expensive. And as you get out here along the water, this is Puget Sound, Saltwater, or Lake Washington, freshwater. Uh, obviously people wanna live where they can access the water. There's a water view. So those properties are going to be more expensive. And I would say it's roughly a 15 or 20 minute drive from the freeway to the water in either direction. So we don't actually have a large body of land to work with. We're very constrained by water. And that's one of the reasons that real estate here is so expensive. We're not a Houston where we can go out uh, 365 degrees in every direction. We are quite uh, constrained. We have to stay along these uh, narrow pathways between uh, Lake Washington and Puget Sound. And same thing over here in Bellevue, we have Lake Washington and Lake Sammamish. So now we're using the map from greatschools.org to give us an idea of where some of the best school districts are. And so I'm screening for schools that have a seven or above on their score. And I don't know that this is all of them because I'm not sure their filtering is that great. But just to give you an idea, you're going to see that a lot of the best schools are here on the east side of Lake Washington. And we do have some in Seattle, but we don't have as many and they're not as consistent across the board with elementary, middle school and high school being good. So, uh, you know, in the Seattle side, we have Ballard. So Ballard has a, a great high school, um, co-elementary school in downtown Seattle. But uh, over here in Bellevue, you have a lot more to choose from, as well as many private schools on both sides of the lake. But for the most part, here on Bellevue and the east side, you're gonna find more options. Now, these are both what I would consider in the city, as well as this Bellevue being a city location as well. Mercer Island is, uh, I would say the whole thing is a suburb. It's kind of like a small town. There's not a big downtown uh, workplace or anything like that. People are going east and west into the cities for their jobs. Um, and then up north, so here by, Woodenville, Kenmore, Bothell, this area, we're seeing some very good schools as well. A lot of people who are working here are living out here on kind of the uh, suburban rural fringe. I would say Maltby, Highbridge, these are some areas where you're gonna find a little bigger properties, some acreage, possibly a goat or a horse here and there. So uh, if you like the idea of having a little bit more space and privacy and land, as well as good schools, these would be some good places to take a look at. So now let's take a look at some homes that have recently sold 
and see how they uh, can engage with your budget and the type of home that you'd be looking for. What I'm entering in here is a price point of 800,000 to 1.5 million. This is a pretty steep price point and represents a move up home for most people here in the Seattle area. Uh, if you are a doctor or a highly paid tech worker or something like that, you can probably afford one of these homes as your first home when you move to the area. But for most people, this represents a second or third home, maybe something they're moving into after selling a previous home elsewhere or living in a condo and then a starter home here in Seattle and then moving up. But it's the type of home that I would consider uh, as kind of a what middle class people think that they want, which is at least three bedrooms, at least two bathrooms, at least 2,000 square feet, and a quarter acre lot. So let's take a look at uh, what we are finding here on the map. So a lot of these types of homes, and this includes sales for the last six months, a lot of these types of homes are, we're finding here north of Seattle. And so if we zoom in on this a little bit, uh, we're finding that we're up here in North Bothell, kind of the Mill Creek area, and also out here in Edmonds and Woodway. I would guess that one of the constraints on these homes is the acreage that I put in there. So we can play around with this a little bit. So here's a, a relatively modest home, but it has five bedrooms. It's a split level. It sold for 900000 Here's Woodway. This is considered a fancier area. This is uh, close to Puget Sound, Woodsy. Uh, this one sold for 1.26. It has 3,000 square feet and five bedrooms. Uh, let's see some other examples. Here's a nice one, pretty fancy newer construction. This is going to be out in Snohomish, Washington. Now, don't get confused because we have the city of Snohomish, which is here, and then we also have Snohomish County. So if you draw a line across here, everything north for a ways is Snohomish County. Uh, this out here, Monroe, is pretty far out, pretty rural, rural suburban fringe, I would say. But just to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like, we can play around with, uh, you know, what if we didn't have to have a quarter acre lot? That brings us up to 4,000 matches. So let's take a look at how the map looks different in this instance. Okay, so we're in that same North Seattle location. Um, and as we come further south, we find that there are a lot more options, including within the city of Seattle, that just aren't going to have the land available, um, as much land as a quarter acre lot. Uh, this is a very dense population area. And so finding that type of uh, space is hard to come by. So we can just take a look at this one here on the south end. This looks a lot like the one we saw in Snohomish, 2,400 square feet, uh, nice wood floors, it looks like. So kind of what I would say not overly fancy, not luxury homes, but the type of thing where most people would think they could be comfortable or what they could try to shoot for um, if they were kind of trying to transition here. Now let's take a look at homes between 500 and 800,000 that meet the same criteria. So a lot of people who I talk with actually don't have the budget to go over 800,000. Seven, 800,000 is pretty much the median price point in this area. And that depends a little bit on, you know, are you looking in King County, Snohomish County, Pierce County, where are you looking? Um, you know, where's the circle around which we're trying to create a median? But as you can see here, uh, when we go into that lower price point, you're going to have a lot more options south of Seattle. Uh, this area, uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. So this area south of Seattle is where we have SeaTac Airport. So, and the port of Seattle, there's a lot of, there's train tracks, there's Boeing airplane manufacturing. So historically, this area has been more um, industrial, which has made it not as expensive from a, a real estate perspective. But we do have West Seattle, which is an in the city beach neighborhood that's very popular. And then as we get down here, we have um, 
some other places, some that have kind of a, a more crime and some concerns about that here around South Center Mall and SeaTac Airport. But then, you know, we get down here, this is Federal Way kind of represents the King County, Snohomish County border. I'm sorry, it's a King County, Pierce County border. So this is South closer to Tacoma. And uh, that definitely has some hot spots for crime activity as well, although much uh, significantly less expensive price points because uh, they're from a practical, easy commute purpose, they're outside of range of Seattle, which makes them less, less expensive. Over here, when we get into Covington and this side, it becomes more rural, but uh, we do have better schools out here in East Renton Highlands and that type of a thing. So you're not seeing any up here in Newcastle, East Renton Highlands, Issaquah, it's become too expensive uh, given the price point that we have, we're looking at 800,000 and below. And we're pretty much not seeing anything in this area and not much of anything in downtown Seattle, the city of Seattle, uh, north of downtown, you've been priced out of. But just to give you an idea of what that 500 to 800,000 will buy, we can click on a few things here. Uh, Here's a home for 680,000. It's actually a lot of space, five bedrooms, 2,700 square feet, but not a ton of street appeal. It looks like um, kind of a, a separated townhouse style condominium. Let's look at some other ones. Sultan, this is way out in the mountains. You can get a little farmhouse on five acres. Uh, let's see the next one. This is very nice new construction out in Marysville, probably an hour north of downtown Seattle, if not more, certainly more during rush hour. Another more modest home in Marysville, um, Covington, south of Seattle and east, <laughs> um, east of, of Lake Washington. So you can certainly find nice homes and you're just going to be a little bit farther out of town here you know farther away i'll show you marysville is up here we were looking at some of the new construction up there uh, sultan is out here so depending on how important that drive into you is are you making the drive every day uh, i have one client right now who works at the airport so he's wanting to be close to SeaTac, and for affordability purposes he's looking south of SeaTac. Further away from downtown Seattle is going to be less expensive. You get more home for your money. These homes closer to Seattle in the same price range are probably going to be not as nice. Uh, this one is on Beacon Hill. It actually looks like they've done a good job remodeling it. And it's 2,000 square feet, four bedrooms. Looks, look, looks like an older home that's been updated. So there are plenty of good options in the... Um, sub median price point, but it doesn't go much below, uh, doesn't go many options below 500,000 for a single family home. So I have the box checked for single family home and between 500 and 800, we do have some between 500 and 600. Let's take a look at how they are. Uh, this is actually beautiful new construction very far out of town probably an hour plus outside of downtown seattle it's the same thing same thing lots of new construction going on in sultan right now it's it's um the next town over east of monroe uh here's one in federal way so this is as far south as you can go in king county before you cross down into pierce county by tacoma so this is four bedrooms 2,000 square feet. Looks like they have some hardwoods. So, uh, you know, slightly dated, but totally livable and certainly something that you could, oops, they've got a problem with the floor there, it looks like. Certainly something that you could live in and make updates to over time if you wanted to. This one sold for 625. So I hope this gives you a great idea of where you can live in and around the Seattle area. 
I would say if money is no object and you just want to live in the best suburbs, be looking on the east side of Lake Washington around Bellevue. Be looking at the Renton Highlands, uh, Newcastle, Issaquah, Redmond, Kirkland, Primo waterfront, uh, water view property here for about one to two million for a nice uh, water view walkable downtown uh, condo. And then uh, as your budget gets more modest, you can go further north up to Bothell and Mill Creek or east out to Duval, but that's quite a ways out there. If your budget is more constrained, but good schools are still important to you, I would focus on going north of the lake here, Shoreline, Edmonds, Mill Creek, Linwood is right here, even as far north as Muckleteo. You're still within driving and commuting distance of both downtown Seattle and Bothell. I'm sorry, downtown Seattle and Bellevue but uh, you'll have a little bit more space, a little bit more options. If you go up to Everett and Marysville, Everett is really its own city. It's not a huge city, but this is quite a schlep to get back down into the city from Marysville. I would probably recommend that if you were like an off shift worker. I had a client who lived up there who was, um, he worked on the trains and he worked at night. So he wasn't dealing with rush hour every day, he could go off cycle. And another client who lived up there who was an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor, and she was coming into a, a clinic in Kirkland, and it took her over an hour to drive there every day. And she eventually sold that house and is now looking for something in Kirkland so that she can reclaim um, those hours of the day. And if your budget is uh, more constrained, you want to shop below the median price point, looking for a single family home, you're probably gonna be uh, wanting to look between 500,000 and 800,000, and your best options are gonna be here uh, south of Seattle. Renton uh, has really uh, undergone a lot of improvements and development lately um, as far south as Federal Way. You'll still be in King County. And then Kent, Covington out here becomes a little bit more rural, Maple Valley, a little bit more rural, um, farther to get in. Um, and then if you want to be by SeaTac, it's going to be nicer, typically, uh, the closer you get to the water. So thanks so much for watching. Again, I'm Emily Cressy here to help you with your move or relocation to Seattle. I am a real estate agent. I work with buyers and sellers, but I specialize in helping people who are relocating to the Seattle area to find their perfect home. I also work with investors, so if you have any plans to find a home that you'd eventually like to rent or that type of a thing, I'm more than happy to help. So thanks again. You can check out the next video now, and I will look forward to seeing you there.